Okay, good morning. I'd like to call the meeting to order. So it is 9 a.m. If we could start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Supervisor Colin Kosmicki, please. Ready, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. If I can get an, a, a motion to acknowledge the certificate of posting. So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Okay, now I would like to open up the regular agenda. Item 1A, discuss proposed changes to purchasing and contracting policy manual. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, this item, um, we've been discussing this um, for a couple of years now we've been going through um, some changes and what we wanted to do today is just present um, a high level view of, of some potential changes and if the board gives us direction then to in the future go ahead and bring it back for an ordinance change. Um, so with that we have Dulce Alonzo, our management analyst here and she'll be presenting this item. Thank you. Good morning, board members. Um, so I'm going to share a brief presentation, and I uh, do have a consultant on the line. His name is um, Alex, um, and he'll be presenting part of the, um, and, and he's from um, R3 Consulting Group. He'll be presenting um, the the portion of, of recycling. He, um, he works closely with integrated waste, but... Um, Kind of a brief overview of our current purchasing um, policy. Uh, it's it's governed by Chapter 5.09 of our county code. Um, currently, it authorizes purchasing purchasing agent, which is our CAO, um, the ability to uh, go into a professional contract, renew, extend contract, enter and and enter into any uh, rental and lease agreements of property um, within his authority, which is currently 50,000. Um, assisting purchasing agents are all our county department heads and their current authorization is 10,000. So anything between the amount of um, 10,000 and one and 50,000 um, gets authorized by our CAO. Um, anything above 50,000 comes before the board for authorization. Um, on re in the red line are some proposed changes that would occur in, in our in our purchasing policy if if the board agrees to. Um, I don't remember the government code that authorizes uh, fifty thousand allows us to put a CPI, um, which is a, a, a California Consumer Price Index, with the fifty thousand. So as pricing escalates, so does the authority of our. Um, of our CAO, so um, that Dulce, is. Dulce, if I may, sorry to interrupt. Um, uh, we've been meeting and discussing this um, with regards to this item again. There's been a lot of discussions internally. I think um, there needs to be a little bit more transparency. I know that there's been some discussions of bringing some software packages in to to uh, evaluate that, and we'll probably be discussing some of this at a later time or later today. But what would we would probably rather do is wait until we have a little bit more transparency on this particular item. Um, Dual say if you don't mind, we'll just pull this one off and then maybe in the future we'll come back with um, some sort of CPI adjustment or something else. Um, but I think for now we'll just Eliminate remove it. that. Sounds Thanks, good. Dulce. So, so, um, so we'll leave as is and... Um that was one of the proposed changes. So, um, so, so the re reason we're bringing the proposed changes before you are for um, operational efficiencies. There's a few grammatical updates, and then uh, to comply with changing legislation. So, I'm going to briefly go through the sections, but but not in um, in full detail. But um, uh, but starting off in, in, in the beginning section, uh, 1.2 and 1.3, um, we're just authorizing or adding the county auditor um, to be authorized to, to receive any potential, um, potential conflict of interest. And then we're also adding um, apparel may be purchased. So currently, um, apparel isn't allowed to be purchased uh, with county lo So if, if department heads want to um, purchase apparel with the county logo to to attend to 
um, represent the county at an event. Um, each person is responsible for purchasing their own um, t-shirt and the county will pay for the embroidery of the logo. Um, so we added a section to, to address that, um, but we are including that, that in here. And um, so that's part of the change. Um, Also in, um, so going to section 2.1, um, we, are, we are clarifying the renew extension of contracts. Um, let me just, yeah. So, so currently under our contracts, if the board approves a contract, our CEO is authorized to um, authorize an amendment over up to 10,000. Um, so this is, this is more for clarity. It's currently in our ordinance. Um, and we're adding the, the language in the purchasing manual to kind of match and to further clarify how he could, um, what amendments he is able to, um, to authorize. So once the board approves an amendment, um, it, then, the, then our CAO would be able to authorize up to 10,000. And um, th the reason we wanted to clarify is just for clarity of, of departments on the, on the process on how to do so, and, and just to, um, to ensure the policy matches current practices. Um, so, kind of going through them. Um, all right, so. Other sections, uh, 2.9, um, so 2.9 is, oh, 2.7, um, sorry, um, so under emergency procurements, we are adding elections, um, we are adding an exception for elections to be able to make um, immediate purchases um, of supplies or, or services if needed if they're within 30 days leading to an election uh, just because they have crucial legislation they have to fulfill and they have to uh, quickly pivot and, and make sure that they adhere to um, elections code so we um, under emergency procedures we all we did include elections um, only 30 days leading to the the day of election so um, you'll see that change in 2.7. Um, let's see. Uh, 2.9 addresses federal and state grants. Um, sometimes departments get special grants that allow them to make certain purchases that are currently not allowed under our purchasing policy. So um, section four that's included uh, would would allow our departments to be able to run any special programs, can any um, conditions that are included in the grant. Um, the only caveat is they they need to provide administration and auditing. Um, the grant, uh, the copy of the the program, and um, and and what their intentions of purchasing is throughout the program. So. Um, so we added that so that if departments are, are get special funding for a special project, they are able to to execute and, and go through with that. Um, so that is the majority of the changes. Before we get to the substantial changes, are in Chapter Seven. Um, so so before we go into that, so I'll just. Um, Yeah. Oh, uh, section six, though, before we go into seven, um, would just change. So currently our assets are, are 5,000. So any property valued over five, or I think two years ago, we updated the, the asset. It used to be 3,000, and we moved it up to 5,000. So um, any surplus of materials match used to match that amount of our assets. Um, but we didn't clean it up on the, the last time around. So, so um, in section six, we're proposing to change any um, any valued assets um, from the three thousand to match the five thousand, which, which which is what our current um, asset value is. Um, so that's some of the changes throughout, um, and then more of the substantial changes. Um, occur in section seven. So, um, with that, I I want to um, I want to invite our consultant Ale Alex 
um, Solander. Um, he's a senior consultant with uh, 3E Consulting Group. He, he works closely with Integrated Waste and um, their firm assisted in revamping um, revamping our ordinance to ensure compliance with uh, new legislation. So um, SB 1383. So Alex, are you available? Yes, yes. I am. Thank you, Dulce. Um, hello, board members. I'm Alex Seward with R3 Consulting Group. Uh, we are the county's contractor regarding solid waste matters, as Dulce just mentioned. I am joined today by my colleague, Sarah uh, Klawex, and so she'll be uh, joining for any questions after the presentation. Um, today, I'll be covering the proposed changes to the county's uh, purchasing policy to address elements of SB 1383, which is the short-lived climate pollutants reduction strategy. SB 1383 started being implemented at the beginning of 2022, and it requires the California jurisdiction send organic material away from the landfill. And it also requires that those jurisdictions buy recovered organic waste products to close the loop and use the resources that have been conserved. Um, in the law, there is a requirement that local governments buy 30% post-consumer recycled content paper, and this includes office paper as well as janitorial supplies. Starting in 2026, when the rural ex exemption, um, because uh, San Bernardino County does have a rural exemption uh, due to low population, um, they, uh, no, they will no longer, uh, after 2026, that exemption will no longer apply and San Bernardino County will need to purchase compost and other recovered organic waste projects, which could include mulch, renewable natural gas, or electricity generated from organic waste. Uh, compost is the most available method currently uh, meeting the current target, uh, of procurement target, which is based on uh, the population of the county. Um, the procurement target for Zam San Benito County will be approximately uh, 1,000 tons of compost um, once that requirement is implemented. Using county vendors to help meet this goal by having them apply compost will be an important part of the process. Um, recycled content paper purchases must also be recorded uh, for all county departments. So copies of receipts, invoices, and labels demonstrated the recycled content of the paper must be maintained in a consolidated location. Uh, if non-recycled paper was purchased for any reason, uh, just you just need to document why that was purchased and save, the, save that in the files as well. Uh, next slide, please. So, um, so the surplus, as Dulce mentioned, the surplus property provision was adjusted, um, and it allows for a third party to facil facilitate the sale or auction of surplus uh, goods over donation. Um, additionally, the suggested policy revisions state the county building and landscaping projects will follow the requirements of the Model Water Efficient Landscaping Ordinance, which requires the use of compost with large landscaping projects and also the Cal Green building requirements that require diversion of construction and demolition materials as required by SB 1383. The policy also addresses other qualifying products to meet San Benito County's procurement target, including potential renewable energy and gas purchases. Um, as stated before, these products may not be available at this time, uh, but markets are currently being developed for those products um, at, in response to the law. The policy identifies these as a potential future uses of reco recovered organic waste products that will help the county meet its target. Um, and that concludes my section, so I'll turn it back over to Tulsa. Thank you. Um, and then, so so following those revisions um, in, in section 7.1, 7, 7 um, there is three new proposed sections that were added to the purchasing policy. So um, the first is 7.2. The procurement of, of logo wear and promotional items um so we briefly touched based on on kind of the reason why we we implemented but um based on on the policy we did include limitations for departments where um there has to be a, a clear purpose of, of why they're purchasing county logo and it has to um, further the operations of the agency um, they're also limited to a maximum of two items per employee f per year, um, unless there's a, a, a need for um, any additional items which would require approval um, from our, our county administration office. Um, so that covers the, the pro promotional items and promotion, um, 
oh, also um, anything purchased um, as a with the county logo could only be used for official county use. It can't be used um, when the employee is off or not representing the county. Um, in addition, if they leave employment, they would have to return um, that as county property. So um, we did include that on there. Uh, the second section is 7.3 uh, procurement of kitchen appliances. So, um, so currently, if a department wants to purchase um, a microwave or refrigerator um, for their break room, it's it's not um, allowed through our current policy. Um, so, so a lot of these items are big ticketed items and are and are um, for the benefit of of more than one single employee so we recommended uh, consideration in adding it so uh, this would include uh, kitchen appliances uh, such as refrigerators um, microwaves coffee makers and ice makers um, as an allowable purchase and um, they'd have to they'd have to be for uh, to benefit the department as a whole and not an individual. Um, so, so an individual couldn't purchase a refrigerator for their own individual office. It, it has to go into a common area, um, such as a break room. So, um, that covers 7.3, and 7.4 um, expands on allowable uh, food and drink purchases. Um, which is kind of not clearly explicitly um, spelled out in our purchasing. So we just wanted to have um, more clear cut rules and our department worked closely with auditing for this. So um, for foods, foods and drinks, um, we included certain, um, we, we included um, where an agency may use uh, county funds to pay for food. So. Um, we added uh, board meetings um, over the, the meal hour, um, any working lunches. Um, that includes working with consultants over the meal hour where um, an employee is not free to take um, their meals without missing essential um, contents from, from the meeting. Um, another one is um, per, um, participants and volunteers. Um, so food may be provided for volunteers at, um, at anything hosted by the county or a county department. Um, so, so we included that. We included workshops, training, and county hosted events, um, emergencies, and awards, ceremonies, employee appreciation and recognition. Um, so all of, all of the um, all of the items we added, there's also um, the county administration and um, the auditor's office may um, implement purchasing policy guidelines um, to implement all of the above. But but those are the the six ex, six um, occasions that we added where um, food and drinks would be allowed to be purchased. And then um, going through the rest of the of the changes, um, there's minor uh, grammatical updates, and then um, there is an update to the glossary um, to include a lot of the language that we included as part of the recycling. But um, but that that covers um, the recommendation uh, the recommended changes. So. Um, so, so for this item, um, we, what we're really looking for is direction on um, on the recommended uh, red line changes, and then if if there's any um, discussion or proposed changes to any other section of the policy um, from the board, we would we would like that feedback, and then um, staff would have to bring this back with the ordinance um, and, and re. re um, make amendments to the ordinance where we would um, we would have to publish a summary prior to the board adopting so um, so so at this time we're looking for feedback um, but we could have thank you thank you Dulce for the um, presentation I'd like to open it up for public comment those in chambers please provide a speaker card those on zoom please press star nine on your phone or raise your hand icon on your screen no comments. 
Okay, bringing it back to the board. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Supervisor Kosmicki? Sure. <clears throat> yeah, just real quick. Um, so just to get it straight, in the past, the employees had to buy the T-shirts and then the county bought the logo to stick it on there. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm wow. glad we're changing that because that's, that's really odd. Um, and then um, just want to clarify for the public that the dollar amounts, um, staff's well aware, and we trust our staff as far as I'm concerned. If anything questionable comes up, certainly somebody will bring it up. Um, and I know Ray's really good about if there's anything that he senses any sort of like um, there might be division or something like that, that he, he always just plays it safe and brings it to the board. So that's all I want to say. Thank you. Anyone else? Supervisor Gonzalez? Yes. Um, I actually had a question regarding the purchasing contract. And when the, the values were changed um, to 50000 did that date back to 2019? And is that an ordinance? Is it, is it a county ordinance? Is it a state statute? How and where did we arrive at that figure? Um, so, so I guess there's two folds. We did, um, we did update our, our um, county code in 2019, um, about then, um, and we, we increased the CAOs and department heads to the 50,000. There is a state legislation that governs, based on our population, um, how, what the limit authority is for our, our county of our population. Um, and it's so and it's, it, a, it's it, a formula it says of some sort. Fifty thousand, and it could have been subject to a CPI back into uh, approximately, I want to say, two thousand three or two thousand seven. So one time we calculated it, I think it'd be about seventy five or eighty, seventy five thousand or so. That would be the maximum under state law that we could grant the authority to the CAO. But we've kept it at fifty thousand in our county for several years now. Okay. Well, the reason I'm asking, it went for department heads from three thousand to ten thousand. Okay. And then it went from the CAO from 10,000 to 50,000. And I just wanted to make sure that we are following whatever the guidance was, if it was um, a state statute that we were following. And then our, our ordinance then was in line with it. OK, yes. good. Um, and so the CPI, we could have done back then, but we just didn't. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and the board does have flexibility if they so choose to, to increase the department heads, um, not to exceed the CAOs, the 50,000. Okay. And then, um, Ray, you mentioned something about holding back on the CPI. Did you want to look at that? And I mean, yeah, I think we need to delve into, into that a little bit okay. more. I think, um, I think you know, I know that there's been discussions about what's being spent, and I know I've had, had discussions with Supervisor Cora about this even before you came on. I think as a supervisor, um, getting a, cr a contract management system and and having that transparent. Um, transparently available to the public so I think these are the things we need to work on over this next year okay. and we have been working on it I know staff's been um, looking at other products over this last year so I think um, you know we'll discuss that during our board retreat and um, we'll have some I guess some really good discussions about it but I think it's important that the public sees what's going on whether it's 50,000 or under 50,000 they can view that so okay thank you that was my only question Supervisor Curl, I just have a comment as a former assistant department head. This is fantastic when it comes to the appliances. It was always tough when the refrigerator would die or the coffee maker would die. I tried as best I could to cover those costs, but um, it, it's difficult. So I really think this is a big step to help the employees and, and appreciate the employees because there are times, you know, you work through lunch and you have to do these things. So I, I, I really appreciate those changes being added. And I do agree that at the retreat, I'd really like to talk about contract management and how that can be more transparent and more efficient for departments. Thank you. OK, it doesn't appear we have any other questions or comments. So we'll go ahead and move on. I think um, that'll come back so, to us. Yeah, well, so as long as we're good, we got OK, so good. We'll bring that back to your board. Okay, Another thank term. you. Yeah, thanks. Okay, moving on to item 1B, approved contract amendment with Celia Allen Consulting Group. Yeah, so this item was pulled. I'm not sure who pulled it. Okay, so we do have um, Dr. Wayne Clark here as well as Rachel White that can answer any questions, but we probably want to get a little bit of clarity okay. on the question. Um, the reason I pulled, and it goes back to the, the topic that we just discussed earlier, there was 50000 that was authorized for this contract previously, 
and then this item is renewing it for an additional amount for up to 200,000, correct? Correct? Yep. Okay, so so again, the transparency, going back to what Supervisor Curro had mentioned, um, what did we get for our initial $50,000 investment? Um, because I'm reluctant to give more <laughs> until I know what we got in the first purchase. Maybe I can yeah. start yeah. off and then I'll, I'll put the other two Because I know that after. you've been spending a lot of time there, Ray, at, at Behavioral I, I'm, Health. I, I'm well aware of what's yes. going on here, so okay, I can probably you, okay, thank you. <laughs> answer your questions. So um, in light of um, the lack of staff, which we all know um, that uh, Behavioral Health has been confronted with, um, there has been other things that we've been trying to get in compliance with, with HR and, and auditing, and that has to do with outside consultants with CalPERS that are that actually are CalPERS annuitants. Um, Gary was helping us at, at um, Behavior Health doing accounting work and being able to address um, some of the needs within that office. Um, we also um, took Gabriel from that office um, as well as Grizel being um, out as well and leave. So there's been a, a huge um, deficit in staffing in the financial side. With that, there's also, um, with the grand jury report, there was also um, dollar figures that they said that, that we haven't spent. That needed to be addressed because our books aren't matching the state's books. And that's really important. This is really kind of to address the grand jury report. Um, and so we had to immediately get on that to address that. And um, the initial part of it is to analyze what was really needed in that office, what is needed in that office. We, are, we have gone out to recruitment. I know that there's, there's um, been work done on that side as well. Um, but with that, that individual started that as well as starting to do some of the work. But again, 50000 just to get in, in there because of the urgency. And, and, um, and it was really important. So with that, I'll hand it to Rachel or to, to Dr. Clark. <clears throat> and, and what we're uh, having to do is there are um, uh, revenue and expenditure reports, cost reports, um, and then uh, budgets that all need to be created and uh, caught up with. And uh, by having um, Cecilia come in and, and do that, we needed to expand that. And that was all part of um, the plan that uh, uh, I walked into. And it, uh, to me, it's a very excellent way of getting the work done. And it's actually by uh, June 30th, as I recall. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, but there's a lot, lot to be done. It has a lot to do with our ability to budget uh, on an annual basis uh, if we don't know what we spent last year. And, or the year before that. And so by getting this all caught up, it's a, it's a really excellent opportunity to um, be able to uh, walk further with our accounting and our um, management of our budget issues. As a follow-up to, um, to that is, um, I know that in, in the past we've retained consultants, and this has no bearing on you because you're just you know recently on board the last couple of months, but, um, I'm hearing concerns from the public that when we do retain a consultant for a particular purpose, um, then the results of the analysis of their, whatever their consultation fee that they're earning, we're not getting that back in terms of public. Say for example, there was a behavioral health issue, a contract we had, two individuals went in there. I still don't know the findings of that and other people in the community are asking me and I can't give that information. So I'm reluctant to spend, I know that this is different, but I'm a reluctant to spend more money if we are not transparent in what we are buying from a consultant. So some sort of hard copy document, an analysis, you know, presentation at the board, but something that the public can see that, and I, and I know, this is my heart, I know exactly what you're, what you're struggling with. So I apologize for being the obstacle um, for you right now, but I have people calling me, especially with regards to behavioral health, more money be 50,000 what did you get for your 50,000 so that question came from somebody else but it's, it's it's out of my mouth but i just want to make sure as we move forward any contracts that we do um I, we need to see the results um supervisor hernandez always said he used the words metrics 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 and so i don't want to be a copycat of, but we need something to see what we're paying for in terms of the investment so i will pull back my 
my reservations on this item, but I will be harping on that same concept you know, throughout this year to make sure that whatever we spend on a consultant, we see the, the fruits of the labor in terms of something that we can share with the public. This 50,000 went to that. This 50 went to that. This, we just need to be able to, to demonstrate that it's being invested wisely. That's it. So my res reservation, I'm, I'm pulling it back. And so. Very um, much appreciated. Yeah. And this was a consent item. So um, I will go ahead. If there aren't any further questions, I'll make the, the motion to, to approve this item. Um, Second. For, oh, for staff recommendation. Someone else. <laughs> All in favor? Sorry. And I'm sorry. Can we just call for public comment? I'm sorry. Yes, public comment, please. I apologize. Sorry. Yeah. Those in I chambers, please too. provide a speaker I'll, I'll card. Those motion. on Zoom, please press star nine on your phone or raise your hand icon on your screen. Mm. Elia Salinas. Good morning. Um, so I'm actually asking the same question. What did San Benito County uh, Administrative Office report get for $50,000. And now you're asking for an additional up to $150,000. And um, honestly, I would prefer, and, it, and I will advocate for the state to come in and do a complete audit of behavioral health. And that's a trip for me to make to Sacramento because this, this is not just happening today. This has been going on for a long time. Um, the department uh, came back with the state came back and said they weren't even up to code they weren't even up to standards to the state so my question with regards to uh, going up to this amount is um, what is the responsibility of dr. Clark coming in with regards to this this position of having uh, the uh, consulting group what what part does he play to reduce that amount of money because I mean uh, these these consultants come in and they have a contract and you guys have all y'all have seen it where they come in for a dollar and then they come back and say oh we need five dollars where does it stop the county has limited funds it's not like we don't and it's very easy for consultants to come back and say oh the government's going to pay because we already started the job we're not going to finish the job if we and it's kind of like it's it's extortion it's legal extortion to start a project at a certain amount of money and then to say well if you want us to finish it we need more money because we haven't been able to finish it so Maybe the public doesn't get to see the report, but your supervisors, have you seen the report? What did you get for $50,000? And why is, is the $50,000 spent as the fact that that's why we now have Dr. Clark as part of it? Or this is actually fiscal. What, where's, the, where's the money? Where's the money going to? And we have two individuals after after the department head left, we had two individuals that were responsible for it, uh, for what was going on. So where do they fall in line with uh, being responsible for the failures of not being able to keep up to it? Um, the, C, the COA you know, went in there, and he has other departments, to, and he was literally there every single day when this when we got into this crisis of trying to go in there and he was pulled from other things to try to pay attention to this department and this department is still in the same status that it was before because we really don't have any answers so is a hundred fifty thousand dollars more going to give us those answers thank you no further comments i think dr clark wanted to respond uh, I do want to say that uh, um, I inherited an, an interesting problem. It was multiple problems. Um, and one of them was uh, the finances and that there was accounting uh, and um, uh, budgeting and um, payment of uh, bills that all those needed to be caught up. And Cecilia, uh, I don't, is it Cecilia? Yes, Cecilia. Yeah. Um, has uh, created the, um, this is the pathway to get finished with that and started all of that work and put a couple of the, um, I think, revenue and expenditure reports and cost reports in place. But there were, there's more to be done. And so that's what this is. And this is an amendment to her previous contract to, to uh, uh, 
finish the uh, the job with that. And uh, and we're st also um, and uh, I think one of the budget uh, uh, people will be back in about uh, the middle of February, um, getting the management of the. Um, uh, budgeting and financing, and we're also having uh, some of our other staff come in and see what needs to be d be done to take care of paying bills, for instance, and making sure that's timely and, and uh, up to date. And so by uh, the time um, uh, our uh, budget manager comes back, those all should be taken care of, and the ability to, to, to look at past um, performance and what our expenditures and what our potential revenues are. And that's that's really critical for our budgeting because it's it's a complex um, uh, mental health substance use disorder, um, Medi-Cal here and MHSA over there and and uh, um, uh, realignment realignment uh, th those all um, have to be blended and only spent in certain ways. So um, uh, I think I, I, what I see is that uh, we're um, made progress. Um, I think regarding the report that you were referring to be, uh, be um, or Supervisor Gonzalez, um, I think there's a draft from those uh, consultants um, and uh, one of the purposes of me is to um, implement some of their recommendations. So, but we, we don't have it published yet because we haven't finished. Thank you. Okay, so we have a motion and a second on the table. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, it passes 5-0. Moving on to item 1C, approve request for behavior or for behavioral health 23-001 for adult and for children youth specialty mental health services. I, I pulled that one as well. Um, and my question was in um, in not able us the county not able to to um, meet the staffing shortages. This is the request for pro proposal to include nonprofits, correct? Correct. Okay, I just needed that to come out of your mouth so I can say yay. So so can you explain how and what we're gonna do with this RFP process um, and so forth? Uh, I th this is the um, beginning, I think, of some, uh, uh, there's been. Uh, Put it closer to your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's, uh, there's been contracts with behavioral health uh, for community-based nonprofits uh, through the last, last 10 years at least, um, and some of those uh, are all in place now. But what we're finding is that we have 21 vacancies and uh, about more than a dozen in our clinical area, and we want to be seeing our citizens for their mental health needs and substance use disorder needs, and um, we just are not getting volumes, and this is a statewide national problem of mental health professionals and behavioral health professionals. And um, we have some uh, excellent uh, contractors in the region or in this area that we can then say, okay, will you come in and uh, um, uh, bid on these uh, children's and adults mental health services. So we had cl clinicians in, and by getting the clinicians in, then we can then have um, Bill Medi-Cal get our revenues moving and keep our, ourselves growing in a way that um, allows us to serve the entire population in a very effective and efficient way. Um, my question is, um, I want to say almost two years ago, um, Seneca um, came in, a nonprofit, and they did a presentation and they gave the county and the supervisors a presentation on the needs of the community and the various nonprofits that were involved and, and available um, for to help behavioral health. So, have you seen that Seneca report? Um, I, I did get a copy of it um, in the last week or so, and okay. so I haven't uh, thoroughly. There's a bunch of reports on you. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> yes. Welcome to our world. Yeah, right. um, they they were they were succinct on point. And they, that report also called the board on the carpet in terms of what we aren't doing. And so I'm hoping the recommendations are looked at and, okay. and maybe embraced. And I don't know to what degree um, you can and will, but I was hoping that with the, the nonprofits being included, that you look at that as a, as a tool to help um, provide the, the services that are desperately needed in the community. Because I do know that you guys are understaffed and clinicians and so forth. And mm -hmm. You can't provide the service if we don't have the manpower. I mean, it's as simple as that. If I may, Madam Chair, and, and it, it really, this is really addressing that yes, matter and because yeah. the some of the issues that came out of that report 
was not working with the local CBOs, not working with the nonprofits. And this is, this is just exactly to help the, hey, we need help. We want to work with our local CBOs. Come help us and, and work with this. So that's what this is. And, um, you know, hopefully we get uh, a lot of interest. And, um, you know, we, we need help. So we don't have the staff. Well, that's why I pulled it, because I wanted the community to see that we're working on those recommendations. We're working on that effort. And if we don't pat ourselves on the back, nobody is going to. And, and we're trying to fill the needs that the community needs. And so that's why I pulled it from consent. So, again, you probably have to go to public comment before I make a motion. So I'll stay quiet, but, but I have no reservations. Well, and I, I, I just want to say that I partially why I was brought in is because of my experience in San Francisco and Monterey with partnering with our community-based organizations because between the two of us, we can have a much more powerful impact on the community in, in uh, helping people in recovery uh, with their mental health and substance use disorders. Can we open it up to public comment, please? Those in chambers, please provide a speaker card. Those on Zoom, please press star nine on your phone or raise your hand icon on your screen. Elia Salinas. Magic. <laughs> I wasn't gonna speak on this because I think it's a great idea that you're, you're not coming, you know, in, uh, in October that you wanted to do something in July or June or whatever. Um, but uh, it brought up a good point. Uh, it brought to me uh, the idea, because I've mentioned it before, so um, what is behavioral health doing to have um, individuals, uh, I don't know what the correct word is, whether they're licensed or what they're, the, how they get so that there can be interns coming in. Uh, right now, it's my understanding because my neighbor tried to get on as an intern and they're not licensed or qualified to have interns. So is this, I'm hoping that this is also going to be considered by um, Dr. Clark to make sure that they get um, whatever it is to get up to standard so they could bring in some interns that already live here in San Benito County and not have to go out of San Benito County to get their credits. Thank you. I, I do want to make a comment about that. We do have quite a bit of licensed individuals. I myself am a licensed marriage and family therapist. My number is 87917 with BBS. Um, and I've been licensed for about 10 years. Um, we have others, licensed clinical social workers. We do have licensed clinical social worker managers that have gone to the intern fair, so we do want to grow our internship program. Unfortunately, COVID hit, so we lost some people to come to intern for us, and then we were moving from an old building to a new building, so everything, it was just a, a mix of things. But we do have gone to the first internship fair. I would say we had six interns interested in starting with us in the fall, so we're really excited that we could. those six will start with us. And that was just at Monterey Bay. We're going to San Jose State, and we will be doing some interns there. So we are trying to grow our interns. We also are growing our staff to become licensed. We just had one clinician become licensed probably a few months ago, and she's now a licensed clinical social worker. And she started as an intern with us. So we're really excited about growing within. And we have a bunch of staff that are getting their hours to sit for licensure. And so really excited about our team. So I just want to share that with everybody. We do have licensed staff in management. And Thank I'll, you. And I'll just add one more comment. We have a great facility. And they have a great office for the interns. So it's labeled interns. And <laughs> so we're ready to go with that. So. Great. Thank you. I look forward to that. Any other comments or questions from the board? Would somebody like to make a motion? I'll go ahead and um, move that we um, accept the item as um, for staff recommendation. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Okay, moving on to item 1D. Thank you very much. Agreement to provide advanced life support ambulance service to the county of San Benito. Um, I'm not sure. If it, 
I'm that not was sure who pulled that. That was Colin Supervisor and Angela. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I can defer to Supervisor Kerr if you, or I can start. I just, you go right ahead. <laughs> um, just wanted to uh, really get a um, little bit more of an explanation just to make sure that there's uh, a sense of confidence and not that I, I didn't, there's any distrust for the public's sake um, as far as these dollar amounts and because there's there could be a, a big concern here going forward, especially with the, um, I, you know, I understand the the five percent that's part of the the whole deal um but the these subsidy increases that we're seeing and i know we've talked be, you know a little bit behind the scenes about the potential of you know especially um with everything going on in the community i'll say broadly um that that dollar amount could could eventually go up so i'm just wondering if staff can just how did we get to these dollar amounts um and what was it just the what level of auditing did we do um to ensure that these dollar amounts were accurate Chris is on the line. Good morning. This is Chris. Thanks for having me. Um, just to shed a little light on this, um, the financials that AMR has provided um, to the board and to our staff um, are available for viewing. They are private to the public because they're a private company. But based on their financials um, and our profit cap that is included in the contract, um, and mainly because of the payer mix in the county of almost 70% our government pays. Um, it's required that we help them um, provide services here by the subsidy. And the payer mix has increased and the, um, the payer is, the government is not paying any higher um, so that Kind of reflects the price or the change in the subsidy and um, to touch if there are changes to our local hospital and if it does not continue to provide services that's a whole nother discussion and we will be looking at um, additional costs that will just um it, it will be a requirement but i um we can address those if and when we are working on that plan b um but this agenda item is strictly for regular 911 service as it stands now in the county. Um, and I do have AMR uh, vice president on the phone if there's any additional questions or if he can add anything. Well, well yeah, just to follow up, you know, because I, I did sure. ask for, we were asked if we wanted to see the information that confidential to the public and I did review it. Um, my only thing is outside of not being a, you know, an accountant or, an expert on these things is it was essentially two pages, um, you know, of numbers. And I just, um, not that I'm accusing anybody of anything, but how do we, anybody could just, could they just put whatever numbers in to make it add up to the dollar amount that they, again, I'm not saying they did that, but for the public's perspective, all I see is two pages of a bunch of numbers. I don't, you know, there isn't backup materials and all that sort of thing that actually showed how we got to those dollar amounts. So I'm just curious what level of, again, what level of back and forth, or did we just, rubber stamp it or I'm not saying again we did that I just would like to know what level of oversight sure. that we put into that so they provide their financials as a requirement every quarter and um, auditing has reviewed them in the past and I according to auditing they look okay yeah, I feel great well, um, the magic word again auditing, to me so my that. eyes see what you see supervisor as making numbers um, but we do have a very long relationship with AMR and um, we do have the right to have them audited. Um, and I, I trust that they are presenting us with accurate information, um, but I'll let um, Mr. Rice speak to anything additional that you'd like to add. Thanks for being with us this morning. Oh, thank you for having me. Um, I mean, pointing out a, a few things and, um, you know, Chris um, hit on probably one of the big issues is the, the definitely the mix of payers. As we increase our rates, there's a very small percentage of the users that pay that increased rate, um, which is where the subsidy becomes necessary. Because in order to um, fund the system, uh, just on rate increases alone, it would be the, the rates would just be be too high. Um, and and our costs have um, gone up considerably. We've seen obviously some of the inflationary impacts that I'm sure everybody's experienced in their life are affecting us in terms of fuel prices, um, the cost of medical supplies, 
um, you know, routine maintenance on vehicles, all those types of costs has gone up. And um, we're also seeing uh, a shortage, um, not just locally, but, but nationally in qualified paramedics, which requires us to um, spend a lot more um, money recruiting and providing in-house essentially sponsored training programs in order to have um, the number of folks we need to make sure that we have um, the proper uh, deployment on the road. Um, so when you put all that together, um, it does it does increase you know our our expenses and and we did um, see um, some losses in in Q2 and Q3 of 2022, which prompted our request for the uh, increase in the rates as well as the subsidy. Thank you for that information. So uh, without going into specifics because of the confidentiality, I one thing that jumped out was um, it looked like there were only three three quarters maybe that were used. And then there was one quarter in particular where the CPI was captured. And I believe that was kind of used as the base with again, without going into um, too much detail. Can that can, can someone comment on what sort of the, the rationale there as far as, and if I'm wrong and how I read it, again, it was just two sheets of spreadsheet information. But what I read was that there was, we're capturing the, a certain number that was the highest, you know, it was the highest CPI number out of the quarter. So I'm wondering how that um, calculation happened. The formula is actually broken down in the county contract with them. Um, and I can provide that if you'd like. And then based on the highest, quarters CPI is how the formula um, was addressed in the spreadsheet. Oh, that's in the contract? Yes. Yeah, maybe that's something we can tuck away to address later. Sure. Absolutely. Later. Okay, I'd like to open it up to public comment. Uh, those in chambers, please provide a speaker card. Those on Zoom, please press star nine on your phone or raise your hand icon on your screen. No comments. Madam Are there Chair? any other questions or comments from the board? Supervisor Gonzalez? Yes. Uh, I'm sorry um, oh. to interrupt. We do have one public oh, comment. Okay. Um, Elia Salinas? Sorry. I did put in advance. It's not like she's calling me right now. So um, thank you, uh, Supervisor Cosmicki, because I basically have the similar questions onto this, and I didn't bring my glasses, so I'm going to be squinting here. Um, so they want 5% plus $122,000. Two supervisors and those other supervisors that were paying attention, uh, AMR came here a couple of years ago and they got a 20% increase. And at that time, their uh, reasoning, one of the reasoning is because they want, they, it was for employees. It, the reasoning was used as employees to recruit and to keep them and to give them an increase. And uh, if you look at the the uh, wages that the um, uh, paramedics make, they're not really that high. This is a for-profit private company. I would like um, for Ms. Mangano to report to the board how far back has she gone with regards to these reports that they do stating what their numbers are. Also, um, let me see what I'm trying to see. Um, the county is subsidizing those that don't have insurance. And I, you, you cannot deny someone medical assistance because they don't have money. So we know where the county is picking up this 122,000. Only you have access to those numbers. Again, Supervisor Kosmicki, you make a great point um, that it only provided for a couple. Um, what was the whole year? I mean, in 2022, uh, in 2021, they came forward and said it's COVID. Now they're coming back and saying it's because of the fuel. So uh, this is a private for-profit, as I stated. What they do not get in fees, they get to write off as a tax a loss. So they're not losing money, but their profits are not and the profits is what they're looking at. The San Benito County does not have profit. We have debt and we have very little reserve. 
and I think that uh, you're probably you're going to approve this, but I think this needs to be brought back in a future item to look at the contract, what the contract is about. And in that contract, is there or why is there not a Prop 218 so that it can be approved by the entire county whether or not we want these increases to do. I know that we do that or that was being done with um, recology. That'll be another subject, but things to think, things to think about in the future. Thank you. No further comments. Thank you. Bring it back to the board. Supervisor Gonzalez. Yes. Um, I hadn't pulled this item, but there were a lot of um, reasons that it should have been. So thank you, um, Supervisor Curro and Cousin Mickey, for pulling it. Um, when Ms. Mangano made the comment, it's based on their financials, that kind of just it, it concerned me. And I, I loved your comment to um, Supervisor Cousin Mickey about two pages of numbers, because numbers are not my forte either. But my question is more global. I wasn't able to attend the meeting last night. The the presentation for the hospital but my question is related to the hospital and that what if we get we as a county have to figure out transportation so that would be another conversation altogether in terms of finances beyond what we're approving today if this gets approved mm -hmm. correct that's, that's okay, correct yeah. so we need to have that on the record that should the hospital not be able to maintain its doors open amr is going to come back to us for additional vehicles in order just to service our community so this is not a done conversation um, not at all yeah it isn't at all supervisor it would um it'd be a whole different discussion and it would be not just amr's responsibility it would be the county ems's responsibility um to provide our community with the adequate number of ambulances to transport out of county for every call. And, and I know that you've said this previously, um, Chris, but can you tell us how easy it is to get an ambulance service to come and work with the county in our location, geographically, mileage, and competition-wise? Because that's a that's the huge elephant in the room um, that if we're not talking about it, we need to be. As far as an, an additional, a different 911 provider or for transports out of the hospital? There's Transport, two different. Yeah, transports and just not being able to bring another business in. Um, there was a comment made previously, I don't know how many months back, about AMR having a monopoly. And basically, they, they have as always a, of a barrel. So I just kind of need to hear that from OES. Um, what's your stance on that in terms of um, this provider? Sure. Well, we have um, approved several different ambulance providers in the county to provide inter-facility transports, which means from Hazel Hawkins Hospital to out-of-county um, higher-level facilities, for an example, um, a trauma center or a cardiac center. So those providers um, are called in at the request of the hospital. Um, we are quite a distance from any hub, if you will, for another ambulance provider, and it's at their discretion to accept that transport or not. 911 is strictly contracted um, through AMR, and they provide all of our 911 resources. Um, other counties have gone out to bid, neighboring counties. Um, in fact, just recently, Santa Barbara County went out to bid, and the only provider um, is AMR they um, won the contract there. They are the provider in Santa Clara County, um, San ben, uh, Santa Cruz County, Monterey County, and all over. Um, but they, they um, run a tight ship and they are a very competitive bidder when it comes to that. And they have many resources throughout the United States to pull. Um, a really good example is last Two weeks with the storms, they were able to pull 10 um, ambulances that were posted in South Santa Clara County in case of an emergency, additional ambulances not part of the 911 system that were just ready to assist one of the counties that contracts with them. Um, they do that for FEMA with a contract. So they have very um, strong ties to resources and outside agencies 
and are um, always have been available to the county and to our needs. But providing additional ambulances should the hospital not um, stay, it definitely will put a uh, financial burden on the county. Any other questions or comments from the board? Very, very quick, Madam Chair. Um, I just, when we do have the contract that comes back, I just want to reemphasize, personally, I, I would like to take a look at the, the stipulation that allows for picking, choosing the highest quarter as opposed to the entire year. It just doesn't make any sense to me that's heavily in favor of the contractor. Um, let's just say, without going into specifics, there's a wide variance from quarter to quarter as far as profit loss, and this just happens to be the highest by far the highest lost quarter and it just you know we're getting the bad end of the deal with this contract thank you somebody like to make a motion so move madam chair i'll second it all in favor aye aye, aye. aye. five zero Okay, moving on to item 1E, review and update the Board of Supervisors committee schedule. I believe Vanessa is going to do a quick presentation on the committees. Madam Chair, and if I can have a point of clarity too as well on this. Uh, we don't have department head announcements for any audits or changes um, um, within the agenda itself, but I did want to let the board know that item 1F uh, is kind of tied to this, and that's why I'm bringing it up. Um, when it comes to the ad hoc committee, um, we're going to bring that back at a later date, um, if that's okay with your with your board. Um, probably during the board retreat, I think will be a good time, um, and discuss any ad potential ad hocs or any other uh, future committees, along with Part B to this, the RAN and the um, conservation item. I think we're going to move. We're going to defer those to a later date. Um, because uh, they weren't on the original um, agenda. So just want to okay. make sure that we had a uh, continuance okay. of the right Great. information. So we have a, a short presentation. Vanessa's going to go ahead and provide that for your board, and then we'll, we'll pass it back to you, uh, Madam Chair. OK, thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair and board and members of the public. Uh, just going to do a short presentation on the committees. So all the, li the complete list of the committees can be found online on our website. Um, and I just wanted to show everyone where it could be found. So on our website, you can go under government and clerk of the board of supervisors, board committees and commissions. And here you will see a list of all the uh, committees. Um, it also gives you information on the contact information for that committee, the date and time of the meetings as well. So under the Brown Act requirements for committees, each of these committees has to create an agenda that is available for the public. It has to be posted 72 hours prior to the regular meeting and 24 hours prior to a special meeting. And um, these committees provide copies to the clerk of the board's office to be posted online and on our bulletin board outside the administration office. Um, these committees also need to uh, create and post minutes for each of these meetings. Currently, there are 34 standing committees, um, but that will be um, adjusted today after the assignments. Well, one additional item that um, we were just going to add is um, I know I, I want to thank uh, Vanessa, Denise, the clerk of the board, and, and assistant clerk on all the hard work that they've done to actually put all the links in, as well as the bylaws any other backup information they've posted that is available to us. Again, as a reminder, some of these committees are not run by the county. They're run by different uh, agencies at time or different um, affiliations or different groups. So, um, so sometimes we don't have all the information. Just want to make sure the public is aware of that as well. So with that, we'll pass it back to you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate all the help, you know, with these committees and um, so the committee assignments are at the back table as well as all of the supervisors have a copy um, I'd love to give you a few minutes to review and then um, get any comments do it can I open it up for public comment now or would you yeah okay so I'll open it up for co public comment now those in chambers please provide a speaker card those on zoom please press star nine on your phone or raise your hand icon on your screen 
No comments. So whenever the board, whenever you'd like to make comments or ask questions. Or make a motion. Yeah. Or I make a motion. Question, <laughs> Madam Chair. Um, I don't see the landfill committee on here. That was the one that I'm just going through the old list and the new list. I'm just wondering maybe there was an oversight there or maybe we just intentionally. As far, far as the ad hoc for the negotiating, uh, that would be uh, perhaps formed later in this year. Oh, no, I see it as a regular committee. Oh, yeah. Um, I was on there, or Bob was on there with um, Betsy before, so I don't know. And I think there was kind of a weird, there was like a, a I think, committee and an ad hoc. and. Yeah, so um, I spoke with county council about that, and I think you were going to kind of look to see if we needed that committee or if we didn't need that committee anymore. Um that's fine to have that committee um or does it can it be an ad hoc and because we're essentially dealing with the expansion <laughs> that's kind of yeah. but then if we want it as a standing committee going forward for other issues that come up with the landfill we might want to keep it as a standing committee but do you want to just form it as an ad hoc as needed and I and I think just uh, and I, I'm going to speak yes, for please. you if you don't mind I, and I apologize please. but um in light of reviewing all the meetings with the chair and we spent probably i don't know half a day maybe long, maybe longer on this it's just looking at ways we can streamline I'm and totally fine, that's yeah. that's what we worked on and and really trying to maybe we can remove some committees and i think we were going to look into it a little bit closer if there was really a need for for that i know that it's going through the process so then i think there was discussions like when we just bring this back to the board but but i think you know come uh during our board retreat i think we're going to discuss the ad hocs and discuss some of these other matters a little bit more in depth with the board and if there is a need for that, then maybe we can put that back on the docket or put that Absolutely. back on the list. But that was that, I just wanted to give you a little background of why it's not on there either. And the only reason I ask is because obviously we have an impending potential consideration for an expansion. And yeah. we also had a, an ad hoc last year that was just focused on the operating agreement itself. So right. all that stuff is sort of on hold until obviously until, until we go forward or not go forward with the committee. Right. So it's, yeah. it's, it's up to you. And I think there was some consideration into some of these items being um, brought back to the entire board. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so that's what we're I, trying to. I believe to that was kind of the thought process with that particular um, committee. But if we get to a point where we need to add an ad hoc or even that. have a committee, then I, I'm definitely open to that. Yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Supervisor Curl. Um, so. Can you explain a little bit about alternates and how that works with attendance yeah. to a committee? Is that something that so we can I'm discuss hoping. since I'm so very new at this? <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm hoping the way, um, I'm hoping really that we can, on any of these committees, that both the delegate and the alternate um, will attend and I especially if the delegate cannot attend I think it's really really important that you're communicating that to the alternate letting them know so that they are prepared for that meeting but my hope is really that um, both the delegate and alternate will attend and um, be prepared but, but madam chair just one clarification there are some committees where there's two and then there's an alternate and in that case like for instance cog I can't attend cog as an alternate because there's already to, and please correct me if it'd I'm be wrong. a brown act yeah. violation yeah. but i really i mean i hope that if if b or i ever were not able right, to attend we definitely um you know i feel like we have a responsibility to let you know as the alternate hey we're not going to be able to attend um please you know please be prepared and and please attend yep yeah so and i can clarify that also about the brown act just i'll, I'll send out an email later maybe okay. about delineating which ones that might apply to and, and that's a great point you know if it's agendized and if it's um and if the the member sits in the audience and doesn't actually you know is not participating but just listening um i'll try to clarify that as well as the voting as well because i think that's important too yeah who has the rights for voting thank you for the clarification Anybody want to make a motion? You okay with it? it? If there's no other questions or concerns, I'll make a motion that we move to approve the selection of the um, committee schedule for 2023 as um, indicated on this spreadsheet. I'll second that. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Thank you. Okay, so one F. Um, as CAO Espinosa mentioned, uh, we will go ahead and move part of that ad hoc discussion to the board retreat. In, um, however, at this point, all other ad hocs have been eliminated. Any public comment? Those in chamber, please provide a speaker card. Those on Zoom, please press star nine on your phone or raise your hand icon on your screen. No comments. Any board comments or questions? No? Okay. Um, so if I can get a motion to adjourn. No. Nope. Nope. Motion on that one. We got the financial corp on no, item number two. I know, but I was going to oh, adjourn oh, uh, and then open back up as finance corp. Yes, my apologies. Yeah. I wasn't sure that you meant like to adjourn, adjourn. <laughs> no, just a, the first adjourn. <laughs> Madam Chair, can I just clarify, do we have to make a motion to move that ad hoc to a future date? Is that a requirement or is it not? You new? don't have okay. to. Okay, okay. Sorry. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, so I'd like to, is somebody like to entertain a motion to adjourn? So, so moved. I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Okay, now I'd like to open it up to the Finance Corporation. It is 10.13 a.m. Can I get a motion to acknowledge the certificate of potion? So Hosting? moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Um, consent agenda? I approve the action minutes of the January 25th, 2022 annual meeting. So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Can I ask a question for clarification? Um, since, since there were only two supervisors sitting at the January 25th, um, 2022, um, and this is a for clarification in general, um, can a maker of the motion or a second be not in attendance of that meeting? Um, there's differences of opinion, I guess, on this. Um, I think it's fine as it's more procedural right now. Um, a more strict view is that you're supposed to go back and watch the minutes. I mean, watch the prior meeting. So like if it was a planning commission meeting and the, the new board is, I mean, like say it's changed over, sometimes you have the board um, watch the prior prior meeting before you approve the minutes okay um, so then I don't the have the board objection. would then take 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 the word of whoever is the, making the motion in the second that they have seen it that they yeah. participated in it that they were part of it of some sort yeah I just this wanted is, that for clarification yeah, yeah. It's, okay this one's, I would be fine with the board making a motion on yeah. this one even though the majority it's a non-issue as to this one but it was just for yeah. clarification in my mind okay thank you sorry Okay, going to regular agenda item to see appointment of the officers for the year 2023. We have president, vice president, and secretary treasurer. I believe in years past you've done the chair, vice chair, and then our county treasurer. I'm sorry, did we? Oh, okay, never mind. Never mind. Yes, that you are correct. Yeah. So it's okay, so is that the will of the board this time? Would you... I, I would probably go out to open maybe public just comment. to public, public, public comment, comment and then okay. and then okay. have you guys formally okay so we can open up to public comment those in chambers please provide a speaker card those on zoom please press star nine on your phone or raise your hand icon on your screen no comments okay bringing it back to the board I see no reason to deviate from procedure so I'll go ahead and um, to appoint the President as the chair, vice president as the the vice chair, and then do we have to appoint the secretary? Yes. Anybody want it? Uh, no, it no, should be Melinda Casillas. Staff, I'm going back to the minutes to see who it was yeah, last year. I believe it's it's been Melinda Casillas. It's been Melinda Casillas. Oh, it's been, it's been Melinda Casillas. Then, um, secretary, um, treasurer, the um, Melinda Casillas. Melinda Casillas. I'm trying treasurer, some of your county treasurer. Somebody want to second that? I'll second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. Okay, thank you. So 
if I can get a motion to adjourn the Finance Corporation. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five Aye. zero. We're adjourned to the next regular meeting of February 7th, 2023. Thank you. Shortest meeting ever. Short to the point. Record time.